Hi, I'm George. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm painting a portrait of my friend Charlie Pickard's studio in South London. And I'm painting a portrait of model, actress and journalist Elizabeth McCafferty. I'm painting on a linen canvas that I've toned to a low chroma green. And the reason for this choice of underlayer colour will come into play later on, so keep an eye out for that. Here I'm using thin down raw umber paint to sketch in the proportions and the gesture of the head. Also as this underlayer that I painted down is still wet, I can wipe it away using tissue and this will bring out the light shapes of the face. From having this rough value composition on my canvas at this early stage, it will help me get the drawing better as I can see those light shapes and darker shapes a lot clearer just with this simple wipeout technique. I'm now going in with a cold mid-tone which is going to sit next to the edges of the shadows and next to this I'm painting a warmer, lighter, general flesh tone value and then on top of this with thicker paint I'm painting down the lightest sections of her portrait such as the forehead and her cheekbones which are catching uh, the most light. And as I paint the planes of the face with these flesh tone values, I'm painting the transitions between the shadows, the half tones, the mid tones and the light tones. I'm painting these transitions very softly as I find it's better to paint a soft edge from the start than to try and make a sharp edge soft, especially when the paint's wet. I mostly use a filbert brush, which has a slightly rounded head to it. So unlike a flat brush, it won't leave a sharp mark as I put down the brush stroke. And what I do is I overlap each section of paint slightly. For example, as I paint the mid-tone next to the half-tone, I'll overlap these layers. And as the paint overlaps, it creates a soft effect where the paint mixes and this gives a smoother flesh-like appearance to Elizabeth's portrait. Once I'm happy with the general shape of the head and the positioning of the features on the face as well as that general three-dimensionality that I've managed to capture just with these early value sections that I painted down, I now start to paint in the features of the eyes, the nose and the lips. And to do this, I'm painting the darkest areas first. And then on top of this, I'm gonna carve in with lighter areas to pick out the whites of the eyes and other areas which are catching more light. One thing that I do when painting portraits is I really try and focus on the anatomy of the face, the structure of the skull. For example, I paint the structure of the eye sockets before I paint the eyes or the eyebrow on top. It's very easy to see the eyes and the eyebrows and these details which are very visual, but in order to make the portrait more realistic, I like to try and paint the structure on which these features sit. That way I can paint a realistic, good transitional structure of the eye socket, then paint the eyebrow on top, similar to the way that the eyebrow sits on top of the eye socket in nature.
To paint the hair, I paint the darkest sections of the hair first, and then using quite a big filbert brush, I then cover in the mid-tones, and then on top of this I paint the highlights, which are cooler in colour temperature, and I apply these highlights quite a bit thicker with a more impasto paint application. So here is where the magic of my colour choice for the imprimatur or the underlayer really comes into play. As I can use this dull green as the colour for Elizabeth's top, that way this saves me a lot of time and I can just add in a few bits of her top which are in a bit more shadow and this instantly gives me the appearance of her top being painted into the painting without me having to do a lot of work and mix the colour and paint it. I can literally just leave the underlayer as her top. Here I'm going in with some lighter paint around her hair and this will also bring her green top out from the background. So when choosing the colour for the underlayer, I like to try and choose a colour which can play a part in the painting and save me some work uh, from having to paint every area of the painting. So if you want to paint quickly, I find it really helps to have an underlayer which is going to act as part of the painting. I hope you enjoyed that video if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel you can also follow me on instagram at george frederick thomas thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video